It's important for Memphians to care about the water source because uh, our water source here is very, very pure. Memphis has an incredible asset in that most of the water we drink is, is 2,000 years old. Our water is so good because it comes from natural aquifers under the ground. It's just layers of sand that purifies our water as it goes through those layers. Protect Aquifer was formed to help with the appeal of the TVA well permits. The Sierra Club here had filed an appeal of the last two wells. The well permitting process at the time in Shelby County was not a public process, so no one knew that TVA had changed its plans from using gray water to using water from the aquifer. We formed up as a local, not-for-profit uh, of citizens who all live here, and we even have people that live in the neighborhood uh, near the Allen plant and we joined them on the appeal. We were concerned near the TVA plant because they found a high level of arsenic in the shallow aquifer near, near that uh, plant. And since TVA was drawing so much water for their plant, at least that was, that was the plan, uh, then we were concerned that it may be some interaction between the shallow and deep aquifer. Now this came on the heels of those things that were happening in Flint, Michigan. So that was a real concern for all citizens. It just kind of stirred the community to pay attention because we've already seen a disaster in another major city. TVA asked Caesar and the U.S. Geological Survey to team up and look at that connection between those two aquifer systems. Based upon our findings, there was a connection between the shallow aquifer and the Memphis aquifer. But of course, it came out that, you know, uh, there is connectivity, massive connectivity. We were saved by science. The findings of the TVA situation had brought an awareness to the citizens of Memphis and to city government. We had drilled wells into the aquifer and there should be this protective clay layer over the entire aquifer but there were places when we drilled a well that we found no clay and that's a breach it's naturally occurring you can't fill it in it occurred you know many 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 years ago but that allows water from the shallow groundwater system which is unprotected and it's known to be contaminated in a number of locations to leak through the breach and get into our groundwater supply. Caesar has been doing this research piecemeal almost as best we can with the funding that we had to understand at a countywide scale what is going on, what is this threat that we're facing. The city of Memphis did something really great. They were proactive in saying, we don't want to become like a Flint, Michigan. We don't want something horrible to happen to waken us up and say, we gotta do something about this because a retroactive response is always, always more costly. Well, we need to have a better understanding of how the shallow aquifer and the deep aquifer interact. We know that there are places throughout the, the area, the Shelby County area and outside that may have some thin spots but in the confining layer or some parts where the confining layer is missing entirely. So there could be some interaction between the shallow wa water and the deep water. But we need to know where those places are. Uh, it would help you to determine you know, land use as well as where you put wells and all that sort of thing. So our plan was to go to the city's council and get a rate increase to fund the study, five year study. Uh, so that's what we did, and the city council uh, saw it in their wisdom to approve it, uh, so they support it. It was really a no-brainer. We needed to do it, and we knew that this study would help us in that, but they didn't want to increase the water rate. They just wanted to make sure that we got this study done. That is where Caesar at the University of Memphis came in, because we've been investigating groundwater in the area for over 25 years and we have the expertise on campus, we have the tools necessary where there's no startup, there's no learning curve. We just you know, step off and start doing the work that needed to be done with this great resource that the city and MLGW and really the citizens of Memphis are providing with an average of 18 cents a month. And with that, we will 
much better understand what the impact is of these breaches, where they are, how water's getting in, and what that potential is for contamination down the road. Therefore, we can protect the long-term quality of this great groundwater source that we have beneath our feet. Citizens of Memphis are very proud of the water system. Mm -hmm. And they know where we get the water from. You know, they're proud that we have an artesian water system. All Memphians should stay engaged with this research. How do you do that? You attend the meetings. Talk to your children about it. Talk to your neighbors. The citizens can get involved just by turning their computers on or getting on their iPad and clicking onto a link and, and watching us in action and listening to those presentations so it's available to the public. Anything that we do has to be available to the public. It is important to know that Memphis still has the greatest groundwater in the nation. This proactive research will better ensure the long-term sustainability of our groundwater supply.